Hi, my name is Igor Kafetz, and this is the Liz Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting-edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of the List Building Lifestyle with your host, Igor Kafetz. I got Ron Douglas here with me, and Ron is the president of Ron Douglas Publishing, a digital marketing company established in 2001, which has generated over $30 million in sales. He is also the New York Times bestselling author of the America's Most Wanted Recipes cookbook series, which has sold over 1.5 million copies and been featured live on Good Morning America, Home Shopping Network, Fox and Friends, NBC News, and in People Magazine. Ron holds an MBA in finance and investment, is a chartered financial analyst, and has worked on Wall Street for J.P. Morgan Citibank. However, in 2007, he left a promising career and a six-figure job to work from home and spend more time with his kids. Today, Ron enjoys helping students worldwide with his proven strategies for building a lifestyle business that enables you to earn passive recurring income. And having chatted with Ron uh, previously, I can tell you that Ron is actually tapping into several niches at once and he's using list building as the primary mechanism to build his passive income businesses. Ron is heavily involved in uh, the writing niche, the real estate niche, uh, the internet marketing niche, in the cooking niche and this guy is like an octopus and he can go into any niche that he can, he can pretty much dream of and come in, use the exact same strategy every single time and build it out into a passive income that funds his lifestyle and his real estate investments. So, uh, Ron, welcome to the List Building Lifestyle. Hey, Igor. Thanks for having me. Great introduction. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, my pleasure, my pleasure, and every word of it is true because uh, you know I've I've been hearing your name a lot, and I was finally fortunate enough to meet you at uh, Commission Expo when I was speaking last month, and I was like, yes, I can finally get Ron Dam Douglas on the show because <laughs> you're like a ghost, like you're everywhere but you're nowhere because you're so passive in this industry. So, and this is exactly what I wanted to chat with you about on the show. I mean, I wanted for you to give us an insight into how to build a passive income business using list building. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's definitely what I've done over the years. That's what I started out doing. List building has been the most important part of my business. And I just kind of looked at it like, you know, what's the number one way to build a business without actually having to have a big office with a whole bunch of employees? And because I left the corporate world, and I just wanted to generate passive income and I wanted to be able to generate traffic on demand and not have that huge type of corporate headache of, of having this colossal responsibility, <laughs> you know, where, where that comes with most of these businesses that you build, like client based yeah. businesses where you're out there, you know, trying to close new clients every day and you have to deal with those clients and talk to them over the phone. I just rather create products and send emails to promote it send emails to promote affiliate products and, and just make a lot of money that way. So yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of business owners, what they have is a business where they if they meet their clients on the street, like if they walk down the street and actually see their client across the road, like they will not wave their hand and kind of, you know, wave them come over here, they will be turning their face to the to the opposite side. So sort of like, Oh, I hope I hope they don't see me, you know, <laughs> so I know exactly what you're talking about. And the way the way you've built your business is way more fun, is way more leveraged. It gives you way more money probably too, and uh, way more free time to spend uh, to spend with your girls. So do tell us, do tell us, how did you manage to build all these businesses and all these niches? What is your secret? What's the 80-20 of using list building to create a passive income business? I think that the main thing is just offering something that people want. Right, doing your research, figuring out what people really want, finding like little angles to offer things that are just kind of irresistible to uh, to the to the person that you want to get in your funnel. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it, it starts with thinking about what am I offering that I'm trying to sell, and then what can I offer for free that's going to get 
that ideal person, that person that is more than likely to buy my product once they get into my funnel, what can I offer to attract that person? And I think early on, I, I learned that because I started out, as you said, in the, the cooking market and I was just selling a cookbook. And this was back in 2003 when I was just selling, I had this cooking site, selling cookbooks. And I said, what do they want that would kind of whet their appetite to get them interested in my product and that would be kind of irresistible to them. So they would come to my site, they would see I'm offering a cookbook that's for sale, but for the people that didn't buy it, I would just give them a sampler, like a sample ebook filled with recipes that they were thinking about buying, but they'll take that because it's free. And then that will kind of show them, when, you know, they test out these dishes, they, they see the recipes like, oh, this guy's the real deal. And it gives me the opportunity to get them on my email list, to follow up them, with them, to convince them to buy that product. Because I know you teach your folks as well that most people won't buy on the first contact with your product, right? It takes follow up and it takes multiple interactions. So you got to give yourself the opportunity to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we follow up so many times. Yeah, we follow up every single day, multiple times per day, sometimes three times a day, because, um, you know, I, I don't know if you notice this, but I've been noticing this, that the marketplace and the world around us is really is really speeding up. And in order to stay on top of mind awareness for our clients, we have to be there every day, several times a day. Otherwise, they just forget about us. For sure. So sure. I've had people email me and ask, like, who are you? <laughs> you know? so, so yeah, why are you emailing me? Quit, quit emailing me. Yeah, I get these all the time. Right. So I want to uh, circle back to what you just said. So you said you started out in the cooking space, in the cooking niche, and you had the cookbook and the cooking site. And then to attract people, you gave them a free sample, sample recipes. And from there, you upsold them into a proper big cookbook. Is that correct? Right. A proper cookbook. And then from there, I added a, a membership site where I would send them, I had this thing called the uh, Cookbook of the Week Club. I would send them a new cooking ebook every week. And these are mostly resale rights ebooks. And that's one of the things I use to increase the average customer value of my sales funnel by having that recurring income, which enabled me to advertise a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there's only a few ways to to increase the the profitability of a business. Either you sell more often, or you sell more products uh, at a higher, you know, at a higher price tag to, you know, on every exposure, or you just kind of build a deeper funnel, right? So, what you're saying is, you start out with a, with a single cookbook, but then you went ahead and you created a weekly offer, which allowed your most passionate customers to come in and buy again and again and again. And of course, this also creates the feel good effect because people who love buying cookbooks, that's what they do. It's kind of like people who love buying cars or people who love buying, like me, Apple products, right? I got the MacBook, the iPhone mm -hmm. and everything else. So every time I buy something from Apple, I feel really good for a couple of days. It's like my, my heroin. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, someone once said that you want to keep selling until they stop buying, right? So, yeah, exactly. And it really takes a while to figure that out. And I'm really, it's really interesting to me. Uh, and I'm really curious how did you kind of accepted that? Maybe it has something to do with your uh, past uh, from, you know, in the finance space. But a lot of people that I talk to, they come in and they're really apologetic about selling. Mm. Yeah. I think that dates back. I really got started in business and got introduced to a lot of this business stuff through MLM. Actually, I used to do Amway. I used to do Quickstar. I used to do uh, Cutco selling knives. I mean, I've done Excel telecommunications. I've probably done a dozen different MLM programs, and I learned a lot about sales and, and persuasion doing that by failing because I, I was awful at MLM. <laughs> it was it was just not my thing. <laughs> You know, I was really looking for something that didn't depend on other people taking action for you to earn money, right? MLM is yeah. like that, right? You got to recruit people. They have to be successful. They have to actually do something or you don't make any money. So yeah. that's what attracted me to online marketing is because I could make money by sharing the value that I offer directly instead of depending on other people going out recruiting. So I think that whole being exposed to that got me involved in sales. 
Yeah, I know what you mean. And when you say that MLM, you know, it has such a high churn and burn rate, primarily because people don't take action. And I was just actually having a call with someone earlier today and I asked him, so you have a team and they have a pretty substantial team. Like they, I think they're making around $250,000 a month. So their team is huge. I'm like, how many times every single day do you run into an issue where you sign people up and then two days later, you either see them drop off or you have, you need to have that conversation. It's like, oh, it's not working. All right. So how many people did you talk to? It's like, oh, I just, I, I just pitched this to my mom and she said no. <laughs> right, right. So therefore it's not working, right? <laughs> yeah. So you shifted your business to something that does not require for your customers to quote unquote take action for you to continuously make money. Exactly. That was exactly the point. Yeah. And, and I, I wasn't great at sales either. I'm not like a big salesman, but I'm pretty good at copy. I'm pretty good at writing emails. I'm pretty good at, at written sales. And I got really good at webinars later on, but initially I wasn't really good at selling people, especially face-to-face. -face. So the internet kind of, it, it leveled the playing field, uh, enabled me to do what I do best and not do what I do worst. <laughs> yeah, focus on your strength. That's one of the things that Dan Sullivan teaches. Just find what you're really, really good at and just invest 90% of your energy into that one thing. Yeah, what does he call it? Unique ability? Yes, the unique ability. That's right. For me, it's definitely not webinars at this point. And, um, but you know, selling in print is 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 a common theme I hear. The more I interview people, the more I interview successful people like yourself, and the more I observe my own life and what made me successful, the ability to move people to action using the written word. Um, or if you do it over webinar, I'm guessing you can just say that it's something you've written prior to that and you just read it out. Right. <laughs> um, a lot of times it's like that. Um, the ability to move people using the printed word is, uh, in my opinion, one of the single most important skills that you can learn and acquire. And this is a learnable skill, by the way, as an internet marketer. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, the internet is all about content and all about relationships and convincing people that your product is something that it's really going to help them. So the more you know about copywriting and influence and persuasion, the better off you're going to be, the better your business is going to do. Because at the end of the day, right, you can get a, as much traffic as you can get. But if it's not converting, if it doesn't produce sales, if, you, if you're not convincing, if you're not persuasive, if you're not painting the best picture of your offer as possible to your prospective customers, then you know, it doesn't matter how much traffic you get, right? So, but one little tweak and your conversion rate can produce a lot more money from your existing traffic. So I tell people that before you start going out, getting solo ads, getting traffic, buying Facebook ads, you got to have your conversions nailed down. So if there's one thing I would learn first is the power of the written word and how to persuade people. Yeah, absolutely. And we were chatting about this before uh, we got on the call. Um, it's like you're a Facebook guy and let's, I mean, there's no reason to hide it. I All mean, right. you're not a big fan of solo ads, are you? I'm a fan of solo ads that, that work. I actually sell solo <laughs> ads. I don't know if you, you knew that. I sell solo I ads. I've been that, selling no. solo ads probably about seven years, to, but to my cooking email list. So a lot of the top guys on ClickBank, for instance, in the fitness category, they pay me for solo ads. But I also buy solo ads in that niche because it, it works, but I buy... The ads that I buy, they don't call them solo ads, right? They call them dedicated email drops. They call them different things. But solo ad is kind of like a thing that internet marketers came up with. You know, yeah, like yeah, because the, because dedicated email drops, I think, go way back, like twenty years back. Yeah, um, it's just you couldn't get a guarantee on the clicks, and it was a little bit different back then. Yeah, well, now you can. You can get a guarantee on, on the amount of clicks. You can, it's all negotiable. Like one of the people I use is uh, Flatiron Media. They have a lot of publications and different niches that people can use, but you know they have a minimum of uh, 2,500 usually. To uh, you know, it's big, big traffic. They have email lists that go into the millions. Oh, nice! Can you can you repeat their name once again for our listeners and myself? I'll just write it down. Flat Iron, like an ironing board. Flat Iron Media. Flat Iron Media. All right, cool. I'll reach out to them and see what we can do. Do they have any, um, you know, make money online traffic? They claim to now i mean they didn't before but a guy just actually hit me up the other day asking me if i want to um, buy some ads from him he said he has some make money online similar type 
offers that um, he's ran before that's worked out. So I'm going to test it oh, out. I, I haven't fully tested it out yet. But I mean, a lot of times with make money online is such an open topic. You can position it to attract an evergreen type of market. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, everybody secretly wants to work from home, secretly wants to make a second income in their spare time. You know, it's all about the way you position it. But if you just come at them like, you know, be a webmaster, <laughs> you know, that type of talk, you know, set up your own blog and be a webmaster and drive traffic, then no, it wouldn't work for an evergreen market. But if you come at them like have a second income working from home, you know, here's a simple way to do it, then yeah, that would appeal to that type of market as well. Yeah, it's kind of like everybody wanting to drive a car to get around faster. But if you start talking to, to people about engines and gearboxes and oil changes and, and tire pressure, like 99% of them just check out. But there's going to be like a 1% car enthusiasts that are absolutely thrilled to talk about that stuff. So it's kind of like, um, you know, you, you earlier, you know, we chatted how you said one of your niches, what you're doing is you're intertwining the make money online with that niche. By simply uh, like by a simple reframe of the offer itself, which is I, I think it's it's brilliant. It's just such a smart, um, such a smart use of of an existing large audience you already have, and you have access to that audience for free, you know, to make more money. Right, for sure. So if you think about make money online and the things that apply to make money online, which is traffic, which is uh, having a product which is promoting other people's products, you know, different things that, that appeal to, that apply to the make money online market, they also apply to other markets, right? So you might have uh, real estate agents who want to learn how to get more exposure for their listings, right? So they may need social media marketing. They may need how to build an audience online, how to generate traffic, how to do paid ads, you know, all the same things that apply to make money online, you could niche it out to different markets and they need the same thing. You just have to be able to, talk their language a bit and not talk about all the uh, internet marketing language like EPCs and CPCs and click through rates and all that stuff. Don't hit them <laughs> over the head with that at first, right? Save that for your actual course. Like you attract them with simple, simplified things that, uh, that appeal to them for what they're trying to do. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've actually been, I'm guilty of the mistake you just mentioned of overwhelming people with words like EPCs and uh, click through rates and stuff like that. I noticed that um, recently one of the offers I was positioning to the marketplace, I bombed because I think I overwhelmed the crap out of the people in the audience. I really, I really did not consider the fact that most people, they just cannot register those things until mm -hmm. you slowly bring them up to speed, you know, through your paid product. When you sell it, when you market it, it has to be simplified to a point where you'd be like, if I share this with my grandmother, will she understand what I'm talking about? Right. All right. Sometimes you assume that everybody knows what you know, but when you've been doing it as long as we've done it and you're just engrossed in this stuff, then you know a lot more than the average person, you know, the average person on your, your email list for sure. So it's like, like you said, dumb down your message a bit, but I, I wouldn't say dumb it down. I would just say simplify it, simplify it so that they, they can understand it and ease them into all the industry jargon and, and terminology. I learned that a lot on, um, I learned a lot about that by doing webinars. I used to have a webinar where I thought I was a smart guy and I used to try to show them all the smart things I know, all these like secret little tactics and things. And I would just lose people because they would start <laughs> to say, okay, that works for you because you're you, right? But that's too complex. That's too complicated. I could never do what you do. So you have to give people the impression when you're marketing that they can actually succeed with what you're teaching. Because it doesn't matter what you've accomplished or how great you are, or how smart you are, they'll admire you, but they might not buy if they can't see themselves doing it themselves. So that's one of the things I do with webinars. I, I use webinars as a, a big list building opportunity as well. So if you have a presentation like a webinar where you can command a, a high ticket offer at the end of that webinar, then you know your average customer value is going to be high and you know you could run paid traffic. It might not work as well with solo ads, though, as we were talking about earlier, but 
webinars are great for me, especially with, with joint ventures and especially with, with Facebook ads for building a list. Yeah, I mean, um, what you're saying is so true because because when it comes to when it comes to uh, information marketing or in, to 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 any market where we're talking about self education, which inner marketing is a, a big part of that market, as well as weight, you know, losing weight and 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 self help and dating and and all that stuff. Um, it's really important to recognize that there's really two big objections besides, of course, the the classic like time and money, which are mostly bullshit. But you know, there's really two big objections. The first one: Will this work? Like, does this really work? And of course, we can overcome this objection by showing results that it's working for us and maybe for other people. But the other one, which is so much more powerful and so much more dangerous to the sales process is, will this work for me? And and the prospect wonders that all the damn time. And it's really difficult to overcome it sometimes, especially if you appear in their world as this genius in a way, right? Where to a, to a lot of other people, like if I... If, if all I say to them about you, for example, Ron, if all I say, this guy has a real estate business, a cooking business, um, uh, a, a, a business where he educates writers, um, he's also teaching other people how to make money online, immediately the perception is, oh my God, is he, you know, has he got IQ of 200 or something? Like, <laughs> how does this guy do it? Right? So we always have to downplay and bring it back. Tell the stories of who we are, where we come from, and how we acquired the success we did. Because by demystifying that success, we allow the people to see and recognize that, hey, I can do it too. Look at him. I mean, he was born in, I don't know, whatever, like Michigan, whatever, you know, and he came from the neighborhood that was like two blocks away from where I grew up. How come he's got this success and I don't, right? That's really the big motivator when it comes to, to moving people into action um, on something like a Make Money Online product. Yeah, that is exactly right. And if you're looking for content for your email follow-up sequences or to put in an ebook or report, those type of stories work really well because they have that twofold type of benefit, right? First of all, they let people get to know you, know, like, and trust you. But more importantly, they let people get to see your journey and get to see that you didn't always start out as this big Superman. You were kind of like in the same shoes that they were in, but here's how you figured it out. Here's how you went from where they were to getting to success. And that is especially inspiring for a lot of people. Part of my, my dog in the background. Oh, it's all good. You're working from home. You're living the dream. Uh, we appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's it's the most annoying thing ever when when I sit down to record a podcast and my neighbor um, turns on his Mustang that got these crazy exhaust on that my walls are quite literally vibrating from from the noise of his engines. It's just it's just crazy. But yeah, that's the downside of working from home. People just don't. You know, don't don't appreciate that we're trying to record a high quality podcast. Right. <laughs> you gotta put on the side or something. All right. So Ron, I know you have a free gift for the list builders. Do you mind sharing with us what that gift is? Yes, yes. That gift is uh we're doing a, a free training that we're gonna present to you guys that shows you how to set up a sales funnel for list building, a, a way that I'm doing it as getting tremendous results. And it starts by building a customer list, right? So it's using free plus shipping offers. Free plus shipping means you have a, a free product that you ship out to them in exchange for their email in exchange for them paying for the, the shipping, right? And I find that that works really well because it's something tangible that people can use. So I'm gonna be doing this training. So you have the, the link for it, right? I'm gonna show people how to do it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the link is igorsolowets.com forward slash Ron, R-O-N. But I just want to I just want to say something. I can already hear the voices coming from the distance, Ron. It's like, what? A physical product? I don't even have a digital product. I'm supposed to get a physical product. Right. If you have a digital product, you have a physical product. If you can buy a digital product, buy the rights to a digital product, you could have a physical product. All a physical product is is just shippable media, right? You could put it on a CD using a service called uh, Kunaki, which is one we use, or, or using a service like uh, disk.com, and they'll actually ship it out for you, both of those services. So it's, it's just, all it really is, is downloading the orders 
and then uploading it into their system or integrating their, their system, setting it up where their system is integrated with your payment processor so the orders or ship out automatically and the customers pay for the shipping. So one of the things that you should know is when everybody is doing something and everybody's avoiding something, that's probably the thing you should be doing as well. You should be avoiding, you should be doing what everybody else is avoiding, Yeah. right? Just to stand out and be different. So if people are afraid to turn their free, like lead magnet items into a, a shippable item to increase the value of it, then maybe that's the thing you should focus on doing, right? Just to stand out and be different. So I do it because what happens is those leads that you get, you know that they're leads that have a credit card you know that they're valid leads, you know that they're really interested because they're willing to pay for the small shipping charge, and you know that you can get them right into your, your funnel. Usually a typical list building funnel would be, you know, you have your lead magnet, you have your squeeze page, it's a downloadable uh, ebook or a downloadable course or something like that. So after they enter their name and email, they go to another page where you try to convince them to buy a one-time offer. Right. But what were they there for? They were there just to get that free item. So most of the people are not going to take that one time offer. You really have to bend over backwards to get them to take that one time offer. So your conversions on that is going to be low. And if they don't take that one time offer, they're not going to be in your sales funnel. Right. So you can't sell them other products. The difference is with the free plus shipping type of layout, you could take that same lead magnet, put it on a flash drive, put it on a CD, uh, make it a printable report that goes out, however you want to do it charge people for the shipping. Now you know they have a credit card, you know they're, they're paying for the shipping, they have their credit card out, they have their, their payment, they're in the payment process. Then you can sell them additional items just as a one click upsell while they're in the payment process rather than trying to convince them to go from free, completely free to buying something. Nice, now that's pretty cool. Now if you don't mind me asking, what is the payment processor you're using? I use Thrivecart, I use uh, Zaxa, uh, I mean, any any type of shopping cart does that. All right. So uh, both Thrivecart and Zaxa allow one-click upsells? Yep. All right. Nice. Nice. Uh, well, we're using Stripe and PayPal. I wonder if Stripe allows one-click upsells, but we'll I guess we'll figure it out because the free plus shipping model sounds really exciting. Once we're done here, I'm probably going to go myself and check out your free training. So, I mean, it's really truly brilliant because uh, you're giving away a freebie while building a customer list and then getting them into a buyer's heat and then you know you present a one-time offer which at this point is you know I'm, I'm guessing conversions on that can be crazy what is your like bad funnel conversion for a one-time offer on the free plus shipping oh bad funnel for the one-time offer something like uh well you you, you usually get about 38 to 40 percent of the people taking paying for the shipping and handling, and then you'll usually get about up to 20% of those people actually buying the upsell afterwards. So worst nice. case scenario, maybe 10% of those people might buy the the uh, upsell afterwards. But you have to be congruent, right? So the thing that you're giving as the free plus shipping item that they're paying for the shipping for should be congruent with the next, with the first upsell, and it should enhance what they're already getting. And that gives you your best chance of them wanting to, to get it. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm excited. So guys, get the free training. Go to igorsolids.com forward slash Ron. Okay. Go ahead right now. Attend the free workshop. It's really exciting stuff. And uh, Ron, thank you so much for spending some time with us today and educating us about how you're building these passive income businesses. It makes a lot of sense now. If you're systematizing that, doing the free plus shipping model, you can pretty much come in to any niche with that model, which is freaking fantastic. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I look forward to teaching you guys the rest of that system and how it works. We're just kind of scratching the surface right now, but we're going to get into it in detail. Thank you for having me on. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. Thank you very much. So, Liz Builders, you heard me. Go to igorsolids.com forward slash Ron. Go ahead, attend the free training. It's going to blow you away. I'm, all, I'm already pumped up. I'm waiting my seat right now. So I'm going to go ahead once we're done here, listen to that. And until next time we chat, have a good one. Thank you for listening to the Liz Building Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. 
Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one.